future designers. A lot of you are finding it really confusing to identify various painting styles in traditional art forms of India. As this is one of the most important GK questions for design entrance exams where you are given a picture of painting or an art form and you have to judge the style of the painting. They all have similar human figures, animals, leaves, plants, trees and a lot of similarities. We understand that these can be really overwhelming and confusing. But not anymore. Today, I will tell you the distinct features of each art form and the differences between the similar looking art forms so that you don't have to get through all that theory and can easily identify the art forms in the exam. The first one on the list is my favorite, Warli art. One of the most prominent art forms by tribal community named Warli tribe in Maharashtra. To remember the state of Wali art, remember W and M connection. Now how to identify a Wali art? Human figures in this art are quite distinct. They are mere stick figures made using very basic shapes like triangles, circles and the arms and legs are depicted by simple lines. The second hint would be the monochromatic color scheme. Monochromatic means only single color is used apart from the background to create scenes and the figures. This is usually white pigment on a dark red background for Warli art. All in the exam you might get a black and white picture but still you can easily identify that only two tones of colors are there. So I'm sure next time you can easily spot a Warli art and also remember that Warli is from Maharashtra. Next up we'll talk about Madhubani paintings. Madhubani gets its name from the Madhubani town in Bihar. This is basically practiced in Mithila region of Bihar, hence also called as Mithila paintings. I hope Mithila reminds you of Mithila Naresh Raja Janak, father of Sita, if you have recently watched Ramayan in lockdown. Madhubani has the most interesting story, tracing its route back to the Sita's wedding with Lord Rama. During the time Raja Janak, Sita's father, invited the local painters and artists to record the wedding scenes by painting them on the wall of the coach as there were no other means of recording. So most of the scenes of Madhubani you will find depicting scenes of various ritual ceremonies of Ram and Sia wedding. But apart from this you'll also find other gods and goddesses like Krishna and Radha etc painted by various Madhubani artists later. Now. How to identify a Madhubani as it is quite similar to couple of other art forms of India. Hence number one is the traditional Madhubani painting always consists of human figures that are quite flat 2D. They even have a distinct bulging fish like eye almost covering one side of the face. Hint number two is these usually have borders filled with various patterns unlike other art forms which might not have borders. Madhubani painting is always having a background that is full with patterns, floral patterns or sometimes even geometric ones. So no space is left blank. Another feature that is noticed in Madhubani painting is its double outline of the figures and motifs. So now if you find all of these features in a painting, you can easily identify it's a Madhubani. Up next is Gone Tribal Art. The reason we are discussing Gone Tribal Art right after Madhubani is because these two art forms are quite similar and are often confused by a lot of students. Gone Tribal Art is practiced by India's biggest tribe, the Gone Tribe of Madhya Pradesh. They are known for the stylized motifs and vibrant colors. Now let's find out the key to identify Gone paintings. Most of the traditional Gone paintings only depict flora and fauna that is only animals like deers, fishes and birds like peacocks etc in their stylized forms and you would hardly see any human figures unlike in Madhubani paintings where extensively humans are depicted. A big hint to identify Gaon painting is its typical style of filling up the forms with short lines, fish scale patterns and dots. This is their distinct feature. Second unique feature is the background, which is usually empty in a traditional Gaon painting. Unlike Madhubani, in which the background is always completely filled with motifs as we previously discussed. Third easy trick to identify a Gaon is fusion of forms. A lot of forms are generated from the same form, like roots of the tree will get converted into peacocks or snakes, or the deer horns will get converted into branches of the trees. 
The fourth key feature is it usually does not have borders unlike Madhubani paintings that has intricate borders. So if you see all of these characteristics in a painting now you can easily point out it's a gone painting and you can now distinguish it easily from Madhubani paintings. Do remember that these points will help you 99% of the time to identify an art form. But still, 1% of the works made by various artists over a period of time might defy or mix together some or the other styles or forms along with their own interpretation of an art form. But for now, this much is enough for you to crack your exams. So don't get confused with every next image on Google. Only search and look for authentic sources when trying to identify an art form. Fourth one we are going to cover today is Fur Paintings of Rajasthan. Fur means to read. These paintings are actually narrative religious scrolls that narrate the folklores of famous Lok Devta or Rajput deities of Rajasthan such as Dev Narayan and Pabuji who are believed to be incarnations of Vishnu and Krishna. The fur are sometimes as long as 20 feet and depict complete battle scenes from starting to ending in form of a storyboard. These are carried by Bhopas from village to village during festival season and are sung and recited using musical instruments in front of village gatherings. So this was another source of entertainment in those times. You can also say an old form of picture cinema. Four paintings can be easily identified as not all but most commonly we can find Pabuji, the hero with the moustache and dressed up in traditional Rajasthani turban being the highlight of the painting. All the scenes depicting him sitting in court or fighting or riding on an elephant during religious processions will be seen. The scrolls will have too many sections narrating various different scenes. The women in these scenes can be seen wearing a borla that is a traditional mangtikka of Rajasthan. So this is another indication of being a fur painting from Rajasthan. Very easy to identify, isn't it? The last one we'll discuss today is Kaligat Patachitra paintings. These originated from Kaligat Temple of Kolkata, West Bengal. So you would find Goddess Kali being main character of ancient Kaligat paintings. So an interesting thing about Kaligat artists is that they did not restrict themselves to the religious themes only. They extensively painted the modernization they experienced during British Raj, the daily life scenes, the babus enjoying with their wives, people with different professions, costumes, etc. were also painted for the tourists as a souvenirs. Even the civil themes like crime, women bathing, etc., personal life of Bengali babus were painted in the scenes. Now, how to identify a Kaligat painting? The first is the choice of their themes, as we just discussed, are not common to any other style of painting. Second is the style of human figures in this is quite distinct. Apart from painting goddess Kali, the bodies of women and the babus are very voluminous and curvaceous. You'll notice the thighs and the legs are more rounded and the face contouring is prominent. Current is the typical style of their eyes and eyebrows is also very identifiable in all the paintings. Unlike the eyes of Madhubani or Gaunt paintings. So now most of the Kalika traditional paintings are very easy for you to spot. That was all for today. We'll soon bring a few more art forms and try to help you identify and remember them in an easy way. And if you think the tips were useful to you, make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't till now so that you are first one to get updates from my channel. All the best.